Futures and options on futures trading involve substantial risk and is not a suitable investment for all types of investors. Past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. When I use the word I in this video, it refers to what I teach in my charting course or what I author in my twice daily oral and written updates. Prices shown on charts and quote boards are in real time and take into account all known activity up to this point in time. And if you'd like to read more of this disclaimer, simply hit the pause key on your video player. Good afternoon, Ira Epstein of Linden Associates with your metals market update for this Monday and this is the 13th of March 2017 about 3.05 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'm still dressed to the hilt as I just got off on Fox Business News uh, with Liz Clayman. And one of the questions she asked me is what's going to impact the markets this week and of course I said the Ides of March. We all know that isn't real but I mean it is real. Caesar of course on March 15th but Really speaking about the market, it's a week where we're waiting to see what the FOMC does. We're waiting on the health care issue from Trump. We're waiting from President Trump's budget. That's yet to come. I don't think you're going to hear anything on taxes till the second part of the year. Uh, but this is like a holding game with the FOMC and then the Bank of England ahead of us. But immediately looking at the market is going to be Brexit. The vote in the House of Commons today, debate, and then tomorrow, I believe it's the House of Lords, but it's expected to pass, and the Article 50 is supposed to be delivered this, uh, this month. So let's take a look at gold and get a feel for what's going on. On the weekly chart, as you can see, you have a pattern of a higher high and a lower low. You can also see how the market fell into this area here of the 1200 level, and it is very much holding it at this point. This fits in very much with my analysis as to where gold was going to go when I was on Fox last week that I thought it could pull there and just sort of well, actually it was Bloomberg that I said that on that it could hold there and it, it's doing it right now. We'll see where it decides to come out of shortly. We're in a down thrust if you just look at closing prices. If you've gone from 1264.90 to 1201.40 and you're getting a little bit of a respite today on the bounce. When you look at a daily bar chart, there's very hard to argue that this market is doing anything but sinking away. It has a pattern of lower highs, lower lows. The definition of that is bearish. What do I mean by bearish? Well, if you consider what's the definition of a downtrend, it's generally plural. Lower highs, lower lows, uptrend, plural, higher lows, higher highs. To break this pattern on the, the current formation, you have to take out 12, 37, 30. Formations can change day to day, so you've got to look at them on a daily basis. When I look at possible bounce to areas, well, the first one could be the 100 day average. Often when a market gets under 100 day, it can stay there for a little bit, but it comes back inevitably and uh, challenges it. Now I use the word inevitably because I'm talking most of the time. It's almost like it, when it got up here over the 100 day and came back, and then back here it got back over it and then came back. So could it just leave it and never return? Of course it can, but more times than not in normal markets it won't do just exactly that. So it wouldn't surprise me to get there. You could even get up to the 1230s. The point is there's nothing bullish on this formation and that's more important. You can rally to resistance areas but there's nothing yet bullish. The bounce came because the market was running against the lower Bollinger Band and pushed away from it but that is not a trend, a trend change and now the market is trying to do something more important. It takes three days in a row of the K and the D lines that make up a slow stochastic reading. If they can stay under 20, three days in a row, I say they're embedded. Now, embedded could be lost the first day that the red line pops back over 20. And if you, when we go to copper, you'll see it happen right away like that. And it can happen in other markets. But more times than not, once it locks in, it stays locked in for a bit, and that's often accompanied by lower prices because momentum leads price. That's the theory. So as we look at this, we have today both numbers that make up slow stochastic. They're both under 20. They were both under 20 on Friday, and if you go to Thursday, they were not. So this means the market tomorrow has to prove if it can bet or not. Right here, it is just very oversold but in a downtrend with downside bias. The gold ETF doing the same identical thing as the futures could bounce back to the 100 day average or even higher but nothing on this chart pattern is going to turn this market bullish at this time and you need another day here to embed. 
The market that's been leading the way up in gold has been the gold miners, which was riding in count how many days under the lower Bollinger Band, and then you did what I said. You turned back to the right. Now, if you lose the embedded reading by the red line getting over 20, and it's five points away, that's considered a lot. But if it does it, the overall goal is the closest of the 18 or the 100-day average of closes. So in this case, it would be the 100. But right now, the bears are in total control of the market. The gold-silver ratio, as I pointed out a bit back here, when you cross that high, this market is in an upthrust. It's gotten back into key resistance areas of this zone. I seriously doubt it's got the power to get over 72 at this point. So it's probably spent its energy, and I'm look, looking to see what it does next. When you go to the silver chart, like gold, you've got two days in a row under the uh, 20 reading. You need another day. The trend is down. The bias is down. If you rally back, first resistance, 100-day average, could even get to the second. So I think it's going to be an important week in these metal markets. In the silver ETF, you at least got to the right-hand side of the Bollinger Band. And if we count days under, you got today, you had Friday. Did you have the day before? You did. So this market is an embedded reading, whereas the futures market, if we come here, day one, two, Friday did not embed. So the ETF is slightly leading the futures at this point. I don't know that that's super important or not. Remember I told you about copper? So let's back off copper today and count backwards. On Friday, both numbers are under 20. Both numbers are on 20, under 20 on Wednesday and on Thursdays. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and they're lost today. The only time they can be immediately regained is the day after they're lost. Let's assume that doesn't happen. The odds favor price in the 18-day average coming together now. Is there a trend here? There has not been. You've had a pattern of a higher high and a lower low. You got under the lower Bollinger Band, you popped up. Copper's been a son of a gun to trade because you don't know what's going to happen in the Grossberg uh, situation in Indonesia where iron is not being shipped out or even mined in Escondida. So don't know what's going on. You are also seeing for the first time in China, the demand isn't quite there for all this copper. And we saw huge builds in the LME warehouse a week ago, and that's not good. So overall, copper got problems, but hard to trade. In the platinum market, the market bounced up today, ran into a brick wall. It has a fully embedded reading. You've got lower highs, lower lows. No reason it can't make another run to the lower Bollinger Band. And yes, you have to be aware that you're fighting a market that got under the 100-day uh, average of closes for the first time. So you're there about five, six days. Over the next, I don't know, week or so, I wouldn't be surprised if you will ultimately get a rally to try to challenge that. In the palladium market, you've got the pattern of lower highs, lower lows, but very oversold. Nah, nothing to do there. And when you go to the dollar index, as much as everybody's talking a strong dollar, it's not there. The dollar's got lower highs, lower lows on a short-term basis. It's under the 18-day average. Therefore, the trend is down, the bias is down, and momentum is still pointing down. So I realize everybody talks on TV, the dollar's super strong. It isn't. Yes, support between the 100-day and the lower Bollinger Band, and resistance are literally right above the market at 101.29. And I realize it. you're going to tell me it's hard to uh, not be bullish the dollar with interest rate hikes coming. I'm the first to agree with you, but the chart action is still short-term on the bear side. Let's talk about seasonal trades, because you got a bunch of them in the month of uh, March now. They're coming one after the other. One of the big ones that just came was natural gas, and look what happened. And the time date was, I believe, March 7th, according to the Moore Research. So what is Moore Research? Well, they have a computer database that they go back at, and they, it says, if you bought over the past 15 years on such and such date and got out on such and such date, the market is one X period of time. In order to qualify, the market has to have won I believe it's 13 out of the past 15 years. And the database is always being updated with new trades and dropping trades that didn't work. They give you an awful lot of information. And how it works is you call us, you get a two-week trial to it. You can go to our website and sign up for it there. They have a very long disclaimer, as rightly so, because at the end of the day, 
past performance, even though it comes out of the database, is not a guarantee of what future performance is going to do. But they're going to give you an email, user ID, and password. You're able to come in and look at the different trades, the different reports that they're putting out, and there are reports galore. The trades will look like this. Buy here, sell, get out on that date, average number of winning days, losing days for both spreads and the markets. Then you're going to get spread outlooks, futures market outlooks, reasons for the seasonals, what they do and what to be on the lookout for, all these different types of reports. It's something we look at, maybe something you should. Call us, go to our website, you can click right up here if you'd like to do it as well. If you see that icon up there, it means you're watching me off a YouTube uh, video. When you click it, our uh, forms will appear, fill them out, choose anything else you want, or you can do it on other websites that post us, and underneath uh, it says click here. I'm Ira Epstein. You have a great day, and I'll talk to you all uh, tomorrow. Take care now.